Hello there and welcome back to a new video. Sheikh Hasina, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, was forced to flee from her country due to unrest in the guise of students' protest against the quota system in Bangladesh that gives 30% reservation to the children of erstwhile freedom fighters. Sheikh Hasina has come to India for refuge amidst the already existing claims that it is India that is supporting the Sheikh Hasina regime in Bangladesh. But the bilateral relations between India and Bangladesh goes way back, which is what we will look at in this video. The partition happened right after independence, creating two nations, India and Pakistan. There was West Pakistan and East Pakistan separated by this huge landmass called India. How did the British think that would ever work? There was no unifying force between these regions other than their colonial past and religion. And that created a lot of tensions between East Pakistan and West Pakistan. The Bengalis in East Pakistan thought that they were being subjugated and suppressed more in the lines of colonialism. The Awami League founded by Sheikh Mujib Rahman, who is the father of Sheikh Hasina, started a lot of movements and campaigns against the unfair exploitative power uh, of West Pakistan. And the 1970 general elections was a turning point. The Awami League won the 1970 election, but the powerhouses in West Pakistan will not let the East Pakistanis or Bengalis form a government. They decided to completely ignore this election result, which caused another civil disobedience movement in East Pakistan. And that was met with severe suppression from the people who held all the power, that is Yahya Khan and Sulfikar Ali Bhutto. Operation Searchlight, which was under consideration for quite some time now, was launched by General Yahya Khan. The goal of Operation Searchlight was to crush the Awami League and its supporters. Kill 3 million of them said President Yahya Khan at the February conference and the rest will eat out of our hands. And thus the genocide started on March 1971. The University of Dhaka was attacked and the students exterminated in the hundreds. Death squads roamed the streets of Dhaka killing some 7,000 people in a single night. It was only the beginning. Within a week, half of the population of Dhaka had fled and at least 30,000 people had been killed. Chittagong too had lost half its population. All over East Pakistan, people were taking flight. It was estimated that in April, some 30 million people were wandering helplessly across East Pakistan to escape the grasp of the military. There was also an attempt at ethnic cleansing, especially of the Biharis and the Hindus existing in East Pakistan. The genocidal rape of women, regardless of their ethnicity or culture, was a, was a distinct feature of this genocide. The estimates are 3 million dead, 2 to 4 lakh women assaulted and 8 million people became refugees. And these refugees flowed to India, which was ruled by Indira Gandhi at the time, and she sprang into action. It was actually an article that came on Sunday Times that prompted Indira Gandhi to intervene in the Bangladesh crisis. It was written by a Pakistani journalist who was sent by the authorities to East Pakistan to write a favorable story about what was happening in East Pakistan at, during the genocide. But he simply couldn't do that, so he fled to the United Kingdom and on June 13, 1971, he wrote his article revealing what he actually saw in East Pakistan during his visit. As BBC says, there is little doubt that Mascarenhas 
reportage played its part in ending the war. It helped turn world opinion against Pakistan and encouraged India to play a dec decisive role. With Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi saying that Mascarenhas article led her to prepare the ground for India's armed intervention. To the genocide operation searchlight Muktivagini along with the Bengali military units that once served for Pakistan came together to start guerrilla warfare uh, against the West Pakistani military. And the guerrilla attacks had considerable amount of support from India. After months of guerrilla attacks and resistance, India officially joined the war on December 3, 1971. The third India-Pakistan war began with Pakistan's attack on India, which was quite preemptive because they felt that India was anyway supporting the Bengali guerrilla fighters, so they were going to join the fight soon. So under Operation Junkus Khan, Pakistan did preemptive serial strikes on eight Indian air stations. Thirteen days after the war started, uh, India achieved a clear upper hand and the Eastern Command of Pakistan military signed the instrument of surrender. It just took 13 days of official war uh, for Pakistan to surrender. Approximately 93,000 Pakistani servicemen were taken prisoner by the Indian Army, which is the largest number of soldiers surrendering after the Second World War. The remaining prisoners were civilians, either family members of military personnel or collaborators or Rasakars. By the way, the Islamic militia had a huge role in the genocide and massacres that happened in East Pakistan uh, in March 1971. That is, the East Pakistani, that is, the Pakistanis used the support of Islamic militia to do to commit such atrocities against the Bengalis and they were also taken captive. Bangladesh became a sovereign state once the war was ended and it was recognized by the UN. The Shimla Agreement was signed between India and Pakistan uh, in 1972 which officially ended the war, the third India-Pakistan war. And as part of the treaty, India agreed to release almost all of the prisoners of war in exchange for Pakistan to respect Bangladesh's independence and sovereignty as a new nation. Now, there is a lot of criticism about the Shimla agreement and how it was a huge blender from the part of Indira Gandhi because it showed such leniency from the part of Indira Gandhi, especially when we consider how strategic this win was. And that is exactly what we will explore in the coming video because we can't do that in this video. So subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss it. So that is the story of the formation of Bangladesh and how critical India's role was in that. And now as we see another huge crisis happening in Bangladesh, India's role is once again very critical and we need to see and we need to wait and see what is yet to come. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with somebody else. Until we meet next time, bye bye. Well, it goes without saying that I don't have a sponsor yet, but not to worry, I will sponsor my own video, more precisely my book will. This is the first book that I wrote. It's a realistic fiction novel about four teens in a city, enmeshed in a life of drugs, love, violence and chaos. A tale of isolation and desperation one feels among known strangers in an unknown city. Well, this book is available on Amazon and Flipkart. The links will be in the description. I will also share the link to the video trailer of the book. So check them out. And now back to the video. <laughs>